Okay, well, you know, for those of you who were here last year, you will, of course, remember that Max Egan announced that that was his last visit to AV because he was going to give up touring and uh, concentrate on other projects. Did, did, did I hear that? Yeah. yeah, I thought I heard that. But uh, anyway, Max obviously is uh, very much an experienced um, uh, traveler, and <laughs> in literally and metaphorically. But uh, he contacted me a few months ago and said, you know what, if you want me to come back to AV, then you know, I could probably make myself available. So I said, well, you know, consider it done. Because uh, you know, Max makes a massive contribution with his radio shows in terms of uh, just keeping people, I think, aware of what's going on in terms of the bigger picture. And I think sowing those seeds, and it's so, so, so important to have mediums that reach out to people who are interested in this material, regardless of whether they are yet active or not. You know, because for everybody, there's multiple stages to work through. And, you know, of course, when you start to realize that things aren't quite what you imagined they were or what you were told they were, and that you're starting to question your worldview, it's important that you have people such as Max who can help you and guide you through that journey up to and including frontline activism, which Max has done. He was certainly at Bentley in Australia in uh, 2014, four years ago. Sadly, that is one of a very, very few successes against the unconventional gas industry in Australia. But it was a remarkable success. 10,000 people turning up at Bentley to uh, run McGas go off. Mm. But uh, Max now, in addition to his uh, regular uh, Crow House uh, radio program, of course, is also touring, running workshops, and uh, speaking at events all around the world. So um, whether this is Max's farewell presentation at AV, I have no clue. We'll see what unfolds. But anyway, for 2018, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome Max Egan back to AV9. Thank you, Ian. Pleasure to be here, folks. What I said last year was this was going to be my, my last tour last year. So I thought it would be the last time I was speaking at AV because, unfortunately, I'm still on the same tour. And I happened to be in Europe at the time, so, well, I'm closer so here. I'm actually in the, still, still in the same clothes that I was in <laughs> last year. I, I looked at the video, I'm, I'm literally in the same clothes. I've, got, I've only got like three, three pairs of jeans and five shirts with me, and I've been on tour since last January, so that's the way it goes. But um, the name of the talk is, let me see if this works. That one? This one? There we go. That one? No, that doesn't work. That's not good. There we go. Look at that. The coming smart prison. The future is our choice. And it is, folks. It's our choice. I like to put this at the start of every, every uh, show that I do, every, every talk that I do. You're in for a bit of a reality check. I don't like to really pull any punches. I just like to call things for what they are. And that's what's been really good about this conference, actually, because everyone's been calling things for what they are. Really high caliber of speakers this year and a real lot of focus on 5G, which is really good. And that's what makes it always so difficult for me to plan my talks here. Like I have to kind of squirrel myself away an hour before my talk to prepare what I'm gonna say because the speakers here, they just bring so much information that you, you can't really figure out what you're gonna say until you've heard them talk. And that's what it's all about and that's what it's always been about at AV and that's why it's so good to come back here. But what is life, folks? I like to always include this as well. Life is wisdom's dare. Life is wisdom's dare. What, it's what we choose to do with it. And we're faced at a real crossroads at the moment. We are at a cusp and we've got a choice of which way we can go. And we've got a lot of different things coming at us, a lot of things that are available to us. The two main things at the moment is 5G and Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and things like that. Who's looked into cryptos? Anyone here into cryptocurrencies? Who thinks they're a good thing? And who thinks they're a bad thing? Show of hands, who thinks they're a bad thing? Who thinks they're a good thing? Who thinks that they can be used either way? Most people, that's good because they can be used either way. A lot of the crypto crew are doing a lot of really good things to try to free us from the banking system, but unfortunately a lot of them have got tunnel vision. They're not really looking at the bigger picture. They're not looking at the IoT and how things are being brought in over the top to circumvent what they're doing. I spoke at Anarchapulco in February, 
And um, a lot of really focused people there, but oh, unfortunately too focused, like I said, tunnel vision. There was guys giving speeches saying that we're all going to be living in a society like the Jetsons within the next 15, 20 years. Stuff like this. And this is, this is sort of how far they're taking it. So I started to talk to them about the IoT and social crediting and 5G, and they were pretty shocked about it. A lot of them were pretty shocked, and they were pretty shocked to see how they haven't really noticed this. And that was a good thing as well, because that's what's coming, 5G, the IoT, interconnectivity, it's all going to be great for everybody. Everything's just going to be wonderful. That's what we're being told. That's the way it's being sold. It's being sold as all, everything that we're going to need, the switch over to digital technology, the switch over to a new reality. And we're being told, like, transhumanism, all the great things we're going to have. Everything's just going to be so easy for us. But what it's really about is disruption. Now, what they're calling it is the second industrial revolution, this whole 5G thing, because it's going to be as disruptive as what the industrial revolution was. It's a whole new way of doing everything that's coming with this whole 5G and IoT, and people really aren't seeing what it is. You know, and what it's really all about is control. And I think everybody here knows that, but it's getting it out to the people, finding a way to get them to see what's going on. How did that happen? I'm really good at this, aren't I? And um, getting it out to the people, because unfortunately they're not given a very good, uh, very good way of thinking these days, the people. And we've got to a stage, really, I'm no Einstein fan, but, you know, he was pretty right. You know, this is unfortunately what we're dealing with in trying to bring this, this situation to people, trying to alert them to what's going on. This is what we're dealing with. This is the type of mentality that we're dealing with. You know, nobody gets real information anymore. If you were watching a reality TV show, if you were really watching reality TV, that's what you'd be watching. Because reality TV is people sitting there watching TV. What do people not do on TV? They don't watch TV. But all you do is sit there watching TV. If you're really watching reality TV, that's what you'd be doing. You know, it's, and that's, that's unfortunately the society that we've got. So nobody really knows what's going on. You know, everyone's scared. Everyone can see something that's happening. What's going on? Well, our kids will tell us because they get the education to tell us what's going on. We're really lucky that our children are, are fortunately educated this well. They can tell us what's happening. But when it gets to the state that you're just too stressed out and everything's all messed up, this is the society we've got, folks, you know. We've got outlets. We can go and play games if we want. That's always a good way to participate in reality. Or we can buy magazines, make ourselves feel better about ourselves. They really cater to the women very well <laughs> in that respect, just so we can feel good about ourselves in society, do something better, you know. This is what we got, folks, you know, and people have just got this education system, they're completely disconnected. And the whole thing has been, in, it's been a long play and it's been a really serious play and it's been a really deliberate play, the whole thing. Now, just the introduction of television to replace parents and the breakdown of the family unit has created this huge disconnect in our culture, a, a disconnect in our society, and has created the means for this to be happening. You could, this, this couldn't happen if people weren't so disconnected from their natural family state, from their parents, from any really real feeling of worth in the world. You know, we've taken that feeling of worth away from people by replacing their parents with television because people don't form that natural bond that they would with their parents and so they go through life seeking attention, not even knowing that's what they're seeking but they want attention, they just want value, they want to mean something because they never meant anything to their parents. They got put in front of a television and that told them how to think and that looked after them and that educated them and that's where they get all their information from. So that creates this type of society we've got now where we've got the millennials, that click clicktivism. Everyone wants likes on Snapchat, wants likes on Instagram, wants likes on all these things because they want the attention and they don't even know that's what they're seeking. But that, that environment is what's made it possible for this whole click, move into this whole social system, this whole um, digital system that we're moving into. We just, we just do that. That's our children, put them in front of the TV. And we end up with a society like this. Everybody just thinks the way the television tells them to think, and nobody talks anymore. Nobody talks anymore around the kitchen table. Nobody talks to their family. Nobody talks to their children. Everybody's disconnected. And this, these devices and all of these things that we're doing these, these mobile phones, these scrying mirrors that we use, did anyone hear a talk that I did recently called Giving Life to Lucifer, where I talked about scrying mirrors and the whole, what, what these things really do? These are, these are almost like a supernatural device to summon this, this force, this AI force that we're creating. And there are so many aspects to this. I mean, even coming out and doing a talk like this and trying to present this type of information to people, 
there's so many aspects to it. There's not just the, the control grid, there's not just the, the radiation problems, there's not just the tracking and all that sort of stuff. There's also the metaphysical aspects, the psychic aspects, you know, the aspects what it does to our consciousness. There's so many aspects to this. But with all these mobile phones and all this stuff that we do, every time you click on your mobile phone, it's taking your fingerprints. It's facial recognizing you all the time, facial scanning you all the time. It's tracking your movements everywhere you go. It's listening to your conversations everywhere you go. I know someone who had his iPad on his phone, on, on his um, front seat of his car, and his wipers weren't working. And he was doing something on his iPad, reading Google Maps or something, had it sit on the front seat of his car, got out, changed his wiper blades, got back, went home, got onto Facebook, and there were ads for wiper blades on his Facebook page, because his iPad was watching him. I got someone in California who had a conversation with a friend of hers about massage oil, there was a mobile phone in the room. When she got home, there were ads on her Facebook page for massage oil. That wasn't even her mobile phone that was in the room. So that's how good the tracking is, and that's what they're doing with all this. And they've been doing it all along. They've been doing it all along, and now they're moving into this Internet of Things, the IoT. And people really don't understand what this is. This, it's not just about convenience. It's about tracking everything, every single thing you do. Everything will have an IP address, everything you buy, everything will be tracked. Every single movement you make will be tracked. Every purchase will be tracked. Everywhere you go will be tracked. And this is what I was saying to the cryptocurrency people, because this is a, a big lockdown. That's what it's all about. If they bring this in, it won't matter how much money you've got, how much cryptocurrency you've got, because if they can limit you with social crediting, then it doesn't matter how much money you've got. If you can't buy things, you can't buy things. And that's what they're doing. You know, I've been screaming out about 5G and the IoT for over a year now, because this is where it's going, and that's what they want humanity to be, that's what they want to do to us. Just completely lock us down, every single aspect of what makes us human, and to be able to control all of it. You know, and they're affecting us in so many ways. This is an attack that is coming from all directions, and we are at war here, folks, we're at war. You know, in, in my first film in 2008, I said World War III has already started, it's just people don't realise what it is. It's a war that the governments of the world are waging against the people. That's what it is. It's a slow kill operation, and we just don't realise it's happening, and we're not fighting back in the right way. And they're attacking us from every, every aspect that they can, every means that they can, through vaccinations, even through the LED lighting and things. The health damages of LED lighting, there's been stillbirths and stuff in Gates, Gateshead, is it, from LED lighting. Also, what this stuff does to you, you know, if you don't use any part of your body, it becomes atrophied. If you sit in a chair for 20 years, your legs are going to stop working. It's the same with anything. If you don't use it, it becomes atrophied. With LED lighting, it, you ever looked at the LED lighting? It's a really bland, white type of lighting. It leaves out heaps of frequencies of light that you should be seeing, and it slowly sends you blind. That's what it's for. That's why they put LED lighting there. It, just, it wipes out all these different frequencies and over continued exposure to LED lighting, you don't see all those other frequencies. You don't see all those other colours. Your eyes become atrophied. And they're doing this everywhere. LED lighting, LED um, things in cars, headlights in cars. And also, they're doing everything they can to compromise their immune system. That's what all this is about. That's what the chemtrails are about. One aspect of the chemtrails, that's what the vaccinations are about. And why are they so intent on compromising our immune systems? Because it's all connected. It's all linked together. It isn't just about making us sick and enslaving us to big pharma. It's because when you compromise someone's immune system, they find it very hard to engage in social interaction as well. There have been studies proven this. So they're disconnecting us more and more and more. It's like um, Dr. Graham Downing was saying, we'll get to a point where we're, we're too scared to speak to each other. And it's getting like that with the texting now with the kids. You know, they're really good online at communicating with each other. People will hack you down and be Superman online, but you meet them face to face and they're just coward little things. They don't have a word to say. They don't even know how to communicate with other people. The sexes are falling apart, dividing completely because people don't know how to communicate anymore through the compromisation of the immune system and through everything that they're doing to us. They just want to control us, folks, and that's what it's all about. And once they bring all this in, and once they bring social crediting in, and with all the fake news and all the memes that they're creating as well, what they've been doing to Patrick, which was a very eye-opening presentation that Patrick Hennington gave, of how he's being pressured simply for reporting the truth. That's pretty amazing, especially on days of, of free journalism. 
I mean, that should say a lot, but it's all about control, folks. It's all about controlling everything and controlling the flow of information. And why do they want to control the flow of information? Not just to hide themselves. There's more to it than that. They want to control the flow of information because the power to lead is the power to mislead and that is the power to destroy and that is what they are doing. You know, it's a war, folks. We're at war here. It's a slow kill. And that's what we're not, we're not responding in the right way. And what they're doing with this whole grid is, is bringing in so they can track you with everything that they do. But they've already been doing it. That's what the whole internet was all about to begin with. You think about it. The internet was created by CERN. It's a military application. It was created so scientific laboratories could communicate with each other about government data and all of their military stuff that they're doing. Then they put it out to the world. The World Wide Web. What does a web do? You know, the internet, the international net. What do you do with a net? You, know, you catch things. You catch things. They're fishing, you know. Why do they make 9-11 so obviously staged? And then they have people out there like Alex Jones going, fear, 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 9-11, 9-11, 9-11, just to see who was awake so they could track everybody. Because when social crediting comes in, it isn't going to be what you do from that point. It's what you've already done. You know, and they just want to get us in this position. We're just constantly battling, constantly battling against the system, and we're getting nowhere. You know, and there's also, like I said, other aspects to it, the whole neurological aspects to it, hooking us up to the D-wave computer, hooking us up to the quantum field, whatever they want to do with it. You know, when you think about it, everyone's scared of being microchipped and all that sort of stuff. They don't need to microchip you anymore because you're already full of nanotech. Everybody's full of nanotech. They don't need to give you any type of um, retinal scan if they don't want to. They can do it off DNA if they really want to. They can limit your social crediting points based on your DNA, based on your retinal scan, based on your bioacoustic resonance. They can send a sound wave off you which will bounce off your bones and it will give them a reading which tells them exactly who you are. That becomes your password. That's how you get into your house, how you get into your car, how you get into all this sort of stuff. That's where they're going with it, folks. And people, unfortunately, just aren't... Uh, aren't seeing it, they're buying into, into this in the United States. Did anyone really buy into any of that? Who's been look, following any of this, QAnon? You really think this is the way out? You really think Q's gonna save us? They're not addressing any of this, folks. This is all theater for the masses, you know? It's just going ahead, everything's going on the way it always has, and why would anyone think <laughs> that this man was really gonna do anything, you know? And like, folks, it's not, do people really think that all this is war and all this stuff, all these countries, you know, fighting against each other and all this, this theatre and stuff that they do? It's all, it's all theatre for the masses. You know, when you go to country, when you go to war with another country, you're not really going to war with that country. It's the two governments facing off against each other and telling you that you're at war with Germany or France or whoever they want to go to get war with, whatever government they want to have a hassle with. That's what it's all about. It's just governments facing off against each other. You remember when, um, when Reagan bombed Libya? Back in the old days, Reagan bombed Libya because he had a radio transmitter going out behind his bunker that was putting out anti-Western propaganda. And Reagan put out that whole speech. You know, they thought we would, they thought we would be passive. They counted wrong. You know, and went out there. You know, we will not tolerate our law states. That whole rave he went out there and bombed the shit out of Libya because he had a radio going in the back shed, right? Well, isn't Iran the deadly enemy of everybody? How come Iran's got a TV station in, in London and they've got a TV station in LA, they've got a TV station in New York? This isn't a radio out behind the back shed. This is a television station that they got in, in, in the country that's supposed to be their enemy. The BBC got a TV station in Tehran, so CBS, CB, CNN, they've all got TV stations in each other's countries. And, and, and North Korea was set up by the CIA anyway. I mean, it's a whole, the whole North Korean foreign policy is CIA run because they all work together, folks. It's all one big party. They're all going, doing the same thing, all heading towards the same direction. Because what do you see in all these countries? 5G. You really think Russia's the enemy? What are they doing in Russia? 5G. You think North Korea's the enemy? What's happening in North Korea? 5G. Look at that. Interesting, huh? What's happening in Iran? Ooh, 5G. What's happening in the Middle East? The Middle East are the enemies, right? They're the bad guys, 5G. What's going on here? It's going right across Europe, 5G. It's certainly coming on in Australia. There it is in Peru. Thought I'd move to Peru to be safe. That's really gonna work out for me, isn't it? There's gotta be somewhere I can go. What about the people who are the enemies of the United States? Let's go to Cuba. Can't go there, 5G. 
Okay, so what's going on here? Cambodia? No, no, I can't get there, 5G. Thailand, 5G. Africa, 5G. What about Lebanon, 5G? Of course, Israel, 5G, because that's where it's all coming from. That's where all the technology comes from, and they're just so proud of what they've been able to do with it. You know, it's all the same thing, and it's being presented to us as this wonderful new reality, and really what it's about is active denial. That's what it's about. And you think about the whole thing as well with the, the smart grid and all the stuff they're doing. You know, it's, it's active denial and it's about controlling every aspect of humanity and leading us into that. That'll be the daily routine of most people and we'll just continue on that path until we find our way out. But once we get in there, there won't be a way out. That's the problem. You know, so we have to stop this from rolling out. That's what we have to do. And the social crediting system that they've brought in in China this is very, very drastic. It's very, very serious. You know, it's something that uh, was a mistake with what Graham said. It didn't start uh, this week or last week. It started a few months ago. When I did uh, my talk in Mexico in February, there were 7.9 million people on China's credit blacklist. Now it's May, there are 11 million people on China's credit blacklist, two and a half, three months later. That's how rapidly it's growing. And the people that are on the credit blacklist, they're banned from doing things like buying aircraft tickets, buying high tier train tickets, so they can't leave the country. Some of them are banned from buying cars, some of them are banned from renting houses. So it automatically criminalizes them, pushes them out of the system, and that's what they're doing. And there's no appeal process for any of this. There's no one you can ring, there's no one you can write to, there's no one you can email, it's just algorithms. <laughs> It's all algorithms that are in place that just determine whether or not you have purchasing power. And that's what I was saying to the crypto crew. You know, in that situation, it doesn't matter whether you've got $100 billion in your crypto account. If you can't go and buy soap, you can't go and buy soap because you're not qualified. That's the way it is. Who do you, who do you appeal to? Well, the machine said so. I don't know. The machine said so. Are you going to talk to the shopkeeper or the manager or who? They don't know. The machine said so. The algorithm said so. And it's getting pretty drastic. I want to show you this, uh, this quick video here. This guy was the guy who, um, he was a reporter who's on the credit blacklist as well. Something else they're doing to these people, if you're on the credit blacklist and someone rings you up, they've changed the dial of your telephone so that the person calling you gets alerted to the fact that the person they're calling is on the credit blacklist. Do you wish to proceed with the call? So this encourages people not to talk to you, not to want to associate with you, or they might get blacklisted as well. And not only that, but they're creating reward systems so that if you do do what you're told, there's certain places you can go. There's extra bonuses, extra benefits, VIP rooms, all sorts of stuff you can do if you're the government's friend. You know? And the people of China, they're welcoming it. They think it will make a more honest society. And there's people that have been banned from flying because they smoked in a non-smoking zone. So this is, this is how bad it's getting. So I've got this video, hopefully this will work. Have we got audio on that? Doesn't matter, you can see it anyway. This is the surveillance, type of surveillance they've got there.首先要解决就是在衣服场景里边或者图像上去找到人脸在什么地方，我们要对这个人脸呢进行关键点的定位。我们需要定位出他的眼角以及鼻尖、鼻翼和嘴角，描述完了以后呢，我们要去到库里边
。那同时在人像，武器布到一定密度的时候，其实我们会经常知道你跟谁经常在一起。In some of China's largest cities, a high-tech effort is underway to bust low-level offenders, jaywalkers. Cameras record them going through intersections, zero in on their face, and then publicly shame them on nearby video screens. It's all part of the Chinese government's new social credit system, where people's daily behavior is monitored and rated. I think it's a good thing, this woman said. It makes people more honest. But this social credit rating goes far beyond a traditional credit score, which is based on your finances. China's version factors in everything from jaywalking to smoking on trains to buying too many video games. If your score gets too low, you can be banned from buying plane tickets, renting a house, or getting a loan. Nearly 15 million people have already been prevented from traveling. You like that? Wonderful stuff, huh? Wonderful stuff. They've also got glasses for cops that'll do that, so you can wear these glasses. They go, look, oh, that person's on the blacklist over there. And they go and grab them out of a crowd. They got a guy out of a、um, arrested a guy at a rock concert last week or the week before. Sixty thousand people at the rock concert. This guy was. Done something they wanted him for something or other. They got him out of a crowd of sixty thousand people. They were all looking at the stage, watching this rock band, and they got this guy went in, zeroed in on his seat, dragged him out of the concert, took him out of the room. Pretty drastic, huh? That sort of surveillance happening, you know. And people worrying and think, well, that's China. Couldn't happen here, could it? Could never happen here. Have a look at this. If you joined the crowds at Notting Hill Carnival this bank holiday weekend. You could be scanned, identified, and tracked in real time, thanks to facial recognition. Sky News has learned that more than 20 million facial images are now held by the police, which could correspond to nearly a third of the UK population. It's the second year police have trialled the technology at Carnival, and it's being deployed more and more. Leicestershire police have previously used it at a festival, and football fans attending the Champions League final here in Cardiff in June were also scanned. But in his first ever interview, the Independent Biometrics Commissioner has told Sky News that pressing ahead with the technology poses risks. If the police start deploying a technology without us understanding what it will do and without any government, government framework, legislative framework, or independent oversight, then I think that will undermine trust in the police. Then you're perfectly right. There is this question about invasion of individual privacy. And there needs to be a proper balance between whatever the public interest has claimed and the interference in that individual privacy. Surveillance is obviously crucial to the police and intelligence agencies, and counterterrorism makes it even more vital. What facial recognition allows, though, is the computer to pick your face out of a crowd, rather than just being kept tabs on. You're tracked in real time. It's mass surveillance for the physical world. Facial recognition has advanced dramatically over the last five years, thanks to machine learning and artificial intelligence. This British company says its recognition systems get ten times more accurate every three to six months, and that they're being used by counterterrorism agencies around the world every day. What you're seeing now is a real-life demo. The state of the art is changing, and what we have now is the ability to do much more in the real world in real time. So what we're showing today is a capability that can be much more in the Jason Bourne style, i.e., we're looking for people in the real world as they go about their everyday lives. Wonderful, huh? Wonderful stuff, you know, because that's what it is. That's what 5G is. That's what the internet's actually been the whole time since we started it. It's been, it's been tracking us. That's what it's always been about, folks. That's what social media has been about. That's what 9/11 was about. That's what it's all been about. So when the social crediting system comes in, it isn't what you will do from that point. It's what you've already done. And so all you have to do is step out of line one little bit, get a little ticket or anything. They can just get a dossier on you and go,、oh, look at this for the last ten years, and they can put it in the algorithm, and the algorithm will decide. Because in this sort of system that's coming, you won't even need police except for any other reason other than to enforce. You know, police won't be able to have to look at crimes. They won't have to go to go and track criminals or any of that sort of stuff. They'll just get a message that they need to go and arrest person B, because the algorithm said so. The algorithm determined that this person is 
not qualified for whatever. They've been disqualified to the point now that they're homeless, they can't buy food, they can't whatever. You're going to have to pick them up and put them in the smart prison system just to keep them safe. It's the humanitarian thing to do. You know, dementia-friendly, like they were talking about. You know, so this is where it's going, folks, and that's, that's the way they're taking it, and there's not going to be much of a way out of it if we allow this to, uh, to be rolled out, so we've got to start taking some action. What's it going to be like in England when you become homeless? I mean, you've already seen how bad it is. Of course, Theresa May's helping. She's making it possible to not be homeless and sleep under bridges. She really does care about the people, this woman. And what else is going on underneath all this is, is this as well. The Chinese One Belt, One Road system. Who's looked into this? Because this all ties in as well. You know, the Chinese One Belt, One Road system is something that's coming in under the carpet that people aren't really noticing. It's coming in everywhere. Um, I was just in Europe. It's being, uh, it's being rolled out right across Europe. They're building railways for it right through Europe now. And it's going to be the new Silk Road. And it's going to be run on cryptocurrency, I would say. It's going to be digital currency that runs it. When it happens, when the, the Chinese system comes online, America will very likely lose its place as the global reserve currency. So we're going to see a huge shift in the financial system. Most of Europe will start trading with Chinese currency, I'd say, once this system comes online. How they're going to do it, I don't know. I mean, Trump's been making America great again by pulling America away from Europe, which gives Europe the excuse to pull themselves away from America. And once China starts picking up the slack that America dropped, people are just going to go for it. Like I said, they're building all the railways for it now. And this will slowly push America out of the, the scene as the global reserve currency. I mean, it's still got a lot of military might, but it's going to change things economically very, very dramatically through the whole world once we change over to this system. And it will all be run by crypto. This magazine, The Economist, it was 1980 or 1986, they put that out there with like a digital Bitcoin looking thing on there with 2018 on there. Very interesting, hey? And this is 2018, this is supposed to come on like October or November, they're talking about launching their official cryptocurrency as well. So this is where China's going, and it's all going to be run by 5G. That's what's going to be running the whole system. Like um, Graham said, they need 5G for the bandwidth to be able to get the IoT to work. You've got millions and millions of transactions happening all the time, so they need this. And this is what we've got to stop, 5G. They've been having a lot of success uh, in stopping this with the Empower movement, with the liability notices. That is something that does work. Again, I mean, it's all fiction. The whole system is fiction. We need to get out there and just pull these things down. But at the same time, you know, for those people who are working in the system who are completely brainwashed, a lot of the police officers they're sending around to the houses to enforce these laws and stuff, if you can give them a liability notice, it's speaking in a language they can understand. And it will slow them down to a degree. So that's something that we can do. That is some step we're going to take. But even with the 5G system, they're putting in these towers so close to each other because it's such a short wave. And they're pulling down all these trees to make it do all this along the highways and stuff. But what are they going to pull down all the trees on the whole country and put a pole every 400 metres over the whole of, of the British Empire to run this 5G? Because they're saying it's going to work in the country areas. It's going to work in areas that aren't in the city. They're saying it's going to work Australia-wide. It's going to work United States-wide. And yet they're, they're saying they've got to put in these towers every 400 metres. So they can't really need these towers to run this the way they're telling us, if they're going to put 5G in these country areas. And I suspect the reason that these towers are going in, really, this is an active denial system. These are more like prison fences. These are more like putting monitoring systems along the roadways, monitoring systems through the places, through the houses, through the streets, so they can cordon off areas, create active denial areas, and they can probably do this through the chemtrails and the nanotech that we're, we're um, ingesting. They can probably target each individual for active denial, so it won't be a matter of just setting up a zone. They'll be able to target individual people for active denial. And I think the chemtrails are also a big part of how this signal is going to be carried. You know, because the air is positively charged now. You know, all this ionised air around us from all the chemtrails. You go outside and you look at the sky, and it's kind of bluish up there, but when you get down to the, the eye level, it's getting white. And that's all the nanotech and all the stuff falling out of the sky, the stuff that Graham was talking about and other things that they're putting up there in the sky. And that's all falling down and we're breathing that all the time. Plus it's, plus it's, it's uh, ionising the air and positively charging the air. And look at these things. I mean. Nobody can tell me their flight paths, you know? I mean, 
People are saying these are being sprayed by commercial aircraft. I don't think they're being sprayed by commercial aircraft. I see some of them coming out of some commercial aircraft, certainly while I'm flying. But I think a lot of these are being sprayed by small drones as well. I think that there's a, there's a, a, a very, very extensive program because, I mean, how, how can you say these are, would the pilot forget his lunch or something? I mean, <laughs> where are they going here, you know? I mean, there's no way this is flight activity, folks. And so an interesting thing, a really, really interesting thing, you know, um, if you're up in an aircraft and you've got a, a camera with a really high zoom and you look out of the window of the, of the aircraft, you can only zoom down so close to the ground. You can never get to the point where you can actually like see a car in the whole, whole lens. You, know, you can get like a few houses, or, you know, a neighbourhood. But if you're standing in that neighbourhood and you get that same camera and you look up at the plane, very often, you can see the whole plane, you can read the serial numbers on the plane. So how can I see that plane so close when if I'm in that plane, I can't see the ground so close? Reason being, because that plane is not flying at 30,000 feet. It is not a commercial aircraft. It's a drone that's painted to look like a commercial aircraft. So people just see what looks like a 747 or an Air American or whatever. But they're not. They're small drones that are flying lower. I really think that's what's going on because I've been looking right into this, and you can't tell me this is flight activity. Even when you look at some of the flight activity over airports, over London, the chemtrails, these aren't, where, where are these airports that these planes are flying to? Because this is not normal flight patterns, unless, unless people take off from the airport in some spread angle manner where they all crisscross over the runway. I don't know how this works. So these have got to be drones that's doing all this, and I think that's what's going to carry the 5G signal as well. You know, but it's going to be a universal system where we're not really going to need government because the AI is going to take care of it all. An interesting thing with the, uh, with the talk, Ian put a typo in there, or maybe that was a typo that I sent him. He called it the common smart prison, and I called it the coming smart prison. But really, it's going to be a common smart prison because it's going to be a common system that's going to encompass the entire world. It will be a universal legal system which is run by AI, which will determine who the desirables are and who the undesirables are, because that'll be the only two types of people there will be in this society. There will be desirables and there will be undesirables. And that's the way it's going. And a lot of people aren't seeing, a lot of people just aren't seeing where they're going. And unfortunately, all the truth movement don't really do their research in the right place as well. Very often they stick to their mobile phones and they need to get out more, do things like what Ian's doing, do things like what the other activists are doing, get away from the clicktivism, get into some activism, get outside and look up. You know, they're spraying poisons on you. They're spraying poisons on all of us. Another really effective way to bring this to people is to um, nurseries and beekeepers and stuff like this, talking about 5G. Because people are just there in their world. Everything's great. They're not seeing that all this stuff is going on behind them. Yeah, but we've had great success talking to people who uh, have nurseries, plant nurseries, and beekeepers, because they're very, very concerned about radio waves and 5G, because 5G is going to stop all the bees, going to kill all the bees. We kill the bees, we destroy the ecosystem, you know how it goes. And these people are very, very concerned. So this is a really good entry point for people who have rose gardens. The old lady down the road who has, likes her roses or whatever, you can talk to her about what these Wi-Fi frequencies are going to do to her roses, and she's going to start talking to other people in the, the knitting club or whatever. I mean, this is, this is how it goes. You know, kids that are into organic food, stuff like this, people that are into health food. A lot of kids are into health food. You know, there should be more young people here. Unfortunately, there's not. But people that are into organic and health food, 5G is going to change the, the cell structure of all this food. There won't be any more normal food. It's going to change everything. Even by walking into a store that's got 5G radiation in it, all the cell structure of the food is all changed. It's just no longer normal food. Again, it's compromising your immune system. They're getting this from every single angle. You know, and we look at all this, we've got all this stuff going on behind us, and again, you know, we just keep asking government to fix it. And government isn't going to fix it. Government is not your friend. Government has never been your friend. Government is the leading cause of death. Always has been. Democide is the leading cause of death in the world. Always has been. 262 million people killed by their own governments in the last century alone. That's what governments do. You know, and police, I mean, there's some good ones, but unfortunately, most of them are so brainwashed, they'll kill you in order to protect you. you know, and that, that, people may think that that's been taken to an extreme, but it's not. You, know, you pull me over for not wearing a seatbelt. Well, I don't want to wear a seatbelt. 
So the police officer will keep hassling you, if you and if you, you don't comply with him, he'll drag you out of the car and he'll throw you across the bonnet of the car. And if you don't comply with him, he'll, he'll tase you. It gets to the point where he'll put you in a cage or he'll shoot you in order to protect you from not wearing a seatbelt to keep you safe. You know, it's ridiculous. They use terrorism against you in order to protect you because that's all they do is use terrorism against you and they all do it. And they've got to realise, you know, we can't deal with this. And, and they're all, all corrupt. They're all doing the wrong thing. It's terrorism. What they do is terrorism. Terrorism is violence or the threat of violence carried out against civilians as a means of coercion. That's an Oxford Dictionary definition of terrorism and that's what your government does to you every day. That's what every agent of the state does to you every day. That's what police do all the time. And we have to stop complying with this. You know, they're causing harm to us. The whole 5G system is causing harm to us. You know, they're coming around to put these things on our home which cause harm. And we say, no, we won't let you do that. So they send a police officer and he says, well, I'm gonna cause harm to you quickly if you don't allow us to cause harm to you slowly. That's basically what's happening. And we're not calling it for what it is. You know, if there's legislation in place that says you've got to have these things on your home and you know it's causing you harm, then that legislation itself is causing harm. What gives the politician the right to write legislation which causes harm? And then claim it can be backed up by a legal system. You know, we created a legal system to prevent the causation of harm and to provide a remedy when that harm is caused. So if you're writing down legislation which is causing harm to me, then who the hell are you? You're causing harm. You're in abuse of the office that you hold, you need to be removed and charged. Now, that's what we need to be saying to these people. You know, if a police officer comes to your door about these things because you're standing up against smart meters, say you'd like to report a crime, the causation of harm. There's a politician that's written legislation which is causing me to have this radioactive device on my home and, and I will have harm caused to me if I complain. I can tell because you're standing at my door threatening to cause me harm when you should be doing the right thing and obeying the law and upholding the law by arresting the politician who gave the order to begin with and wrote the legislation because guess what? They're causing you harm as well. You know, the order followers. How do we get through to these people, folks? How do we get through to them? It's going to be nice to them, but I guess people aren't. People want to get angry with them because that's just what they, uh, what they create in people. And no one wants to stick their head up because they're too scared it's going to get, get mowed down. They just, again, keep keep turning to government, and government's not going to do anything. It's just marching out, rolling out. And everyone's embracing it because it's, it's so sexy, it's so wonderful. And even in the truth movement, people look at it all, but they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do about it. They, they want a plan. Everybody wants a plan. You know, even with what I do, people say, well, it's all great for you to come and bring us all this information, but what's your plan? How do we get out? What's the plan, you know? It's the same with everyone. They want a plan. They don't realise that you're the plan. You're the way out. You know, this whole misplaced belief in authority that we've got, this is the way out. You know, the fact that people believe they have to do what they're told, this is the problem. That they write all this stuff down on paper and call it law and we just can't see the forest for the trees, you know. We just keep going along with it. We just won't face the fact that there's people who plan evil things and they just do evil things. You know, and when we look at this, we admit it, okay, the government's corrupt, I know, let's find a way out, we've got a better way out. What happened, it's what happened there, stop. We've got a better way out, we've got a better way out. This is what everybody wants to do. Let's petition the government. Let's vote people in, vote people out. You know, it's not gonna work, folks, this really doesn't work. It doesn't matter how good the shackles are, you're still a slave, you know, but we go through our lives, you know, we, we go through lives with a mask on. We go through everything with a mask on. We're scared to really break out of ourselves and be who we are. You know, we go to our jobs, we do what we're told. And even when people know this information and they want to stand up against this information, very often they'll act on it to a certain point. You know, they'll act on it to the point that they don't really get in trouble, you know. A lot of activists, a lot of people I find in Australia, even people who are on the dole on unemployment or whatever, and they'll, they need their money. They'll only be activists to a certain point that it doesn't really affect their government benefits, it doesn't really affect the nanny state too much. You know, they want some of the change, but they don't want all of the change. They don't want to be the change. You know, that famous quote, you know, who wants to, who wants change? Yeah, everybody, who wants to, who wants to change? Nobody puts their hands up, you know, but we've got to change. We've got to realise what we're dealing with and we're the ones that are holding the system up and we can't let this thing come online because it's not going to be very good, you know, and I know it's a, it's a hard battle. You know, it's, it's, it's us just there in this little boat, this little umbrella, 
going across this massive tidal wave thinking we can't do anything, but we can. Everybody can make a difference with this fight. Everybody can get involved. Now, you don't have to accept what's going on. You've got to realise that we're fighting a war here. We really are. These people are going to kill us. They're going to do it slowly so people don't really notice. And they're going to do more than that. They're going to shift us into this total control system. And once it comes online, there's not going to be any way out of it. There's not going to be any appeal process. You see what they're doing to the media now with social media, limiting news services, fake news, these whole memes they're creating. You can't even alert people to the fact that it's NASA doing most of the chemtrail spraying anymore. All of that's been co-opted, all the arguments. It turns into arguments about other things. So it's really hard to alert people to what's going on. So we've got to start focusing on the real issues and the health issues that are going to reach people. Like I said, 5G, the bees, things like this, and just saying no. When these people come around to put these meters on your house and to, to give you all these smart devices, just say no. Call Theresa, out for, Theresa May out for being the criminal that she is. She's a criminal. These people are criminals. You know, when politicians and stuff do this, these things, they're criminals, folks. You know, we can't do it. We can't allow this stuff to go on. No more of this stuff, folks. No more of it, you know. No more of, um, of this. These guys know. You know, the Palestinians know, and I've often said the way of Palestine will be the way of the world if we don't fix this problem, because they test all this stuff in Palestine. They test all these weapon systems and all these 5G systems. They do all this, and they know what it's like to be fighting in battle, and they know the reality of the situation. You know, when, when law, when injustice becomes law, then resistance becomes a duty. And it's true, and that's the state that we're in, folks. You know, we can't ask these people anymore. We can't be nice about this anymore. We've got to call things out for what they are. And we've got to rally the people around us to do it. And this is an opportunity, like you've been hearing from Mark, like you heard from Graham, like you've heard from everybody. This is a huge opportunity. Because this is something that directly affects everybody's health. Or everybody. Everything, every aspect. It affects the food. It affects everything. Everything that we do. And it's affecting us on all levels. So this is a huge opportunity for mankind to do this. You know, we can't have any more of this. No more of this, folks. No more of this. 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 We all know that's going on. And no more of this. No more looking at all this stuff and saying nothing about it. You know, I'm being politically correct. You know, we can use the right pronouns or the right whatever, but no more, no more saying, please, I want to question you about something. Just, just say, why shouldn't you be charged? You know, people need to really rally and stand up against this government. Why should you people not be held in abusive office? We've got to pull these governments down, folks. We've got to pull them out of office. They're criminals. You know, what we're dealing with here is a multinational, multi-generational criminal cabal that operates in all countries, and they're all working together. Like I said, this 5G is coming out in every country. All these theatres of war, all these theatres of conflict, it doesn't mean anything. There's never going to be a nuclear war with Russia. It's a joke. This whole poison scare, what was that, Skipperol or whatever it is? Did anyone buy into that? That's just so funny. It was, I mean, it's so, it's so, it was so stupid, it was funny. I mean, it's serious. I mean, what they're doing as a result is serious, but you look at it, I mean, who writes this stuff? It was so bad, like a Russian, secret Russian agent with a secret nerve agent that can only be traced to Russia is going to go and poison this guy in a pizza store in Salisbury. I mean, come on, you know? I mean, I don't know how anyone, anyone swallows this stuff, but we can't have any more of this stuff, folks. We've got, to, we've got to really face, we need more of this is what we need, okay? More of this, more of this, because that's what people aren't doing, you know? We're, even. When we address these problems, we won't just call it for what it is. We won't just call it out for its, its criminality. This government is a criminal system. You know, and, and they come at you with your legislation. This is one I always love to use. You know? They come at you with their paper-based reality. You know, we've written this down that this is law. You've got to do it. Well, hang on. Why, does it, why do I have to do it just because you wrote it down on paper? I've got to let you destroy the world because you wrote it down on paper. Just like a paper-based reality. You know, well, here's the Geneva Convention, which says collective punishment is a war crime, and all you politicians are supporting the State of Israel, which has got Gaza Strip there, which is collective punishment. So Theresa May, according to that process, you're a war criminal under British legislation. So how is any of your legislation valid? How can you come at me with anything when you're guilty under your own law? 
And if you can't be charged for that, and if you can't be held accountable, and the, the police can't be held accountable for coming and causing harm to me because I'm protesting against this smart meter, then there is no law. And thank you for confirming that fact, that there is no law. So the only real hope for humanity is to revert to natural law. And natural law says people will face the consequences of their actions. And the consequences of the, the, these people's actions should be to this entire community, this entire world is angry, really angry. And we'll take these people out of power and put them where they need to be. I'd love to get every politician and put them on Christmas Island. Give them all a hammer, they can have their war. We could film it, it'd be wonderful. Put it on a reality TV show. We don't need these people, folks. Government causes harm, that's all they do. And we've got, to, we've got to step into this. We've got to realize that we are the way out of this. And you think about all this, you know, I've, I've done whole talks where I've talked about life, life is a prayer. You are a prayer. Every, everything you are doing is a prayer. The emotional energy that you're putting out is a prayer. So even with all this stuff that we're looking at, all this 5G stuff and this whole prison system that's coming, people look at it and they get in real fear of it. And they get in fear and they project that out there and they bring it on. I look at this and I find it empowering, incredibly empowering. I see the more you try to lock me down, the freer I feel, because yeah, I will not take a backward step to any of you. And I don't need to go and prove my sovereignty to anybody or any of that sort of stuff. If I'm not sovereign, show me why. If you're claiming I'm not, show me how. If I have to fill out any forms and send anything back to the Vatican or anything, how free do I think I am? Tell me why I have to do that. By the way, who the hell are you? You know, who are you people? Your people we employ to manage infrastructure for us and you're all full of shit. You're not doing what we employ you to do, so bye. Really, it's that simple, folks. But we have to stand up and do it and don't think you can just keep your head down and think, oh, it's all gonna go away if I be a good little person and keep my social credit right so I'm gonna be good. It's not gonna work that way because they're gonna squeeze more and more of humanity out of you, more and more and more and more until it gets to the point, like Graham said, we're too scared to even talk to each other. We won't be able to talk to each other because you won't be able to construct a sentence without breaking the law, you know? And we've got to recognise this for what it is. It's we just simply don't want to do this, you know? It's a simple fact of saying no. No, sorry, we're not doing that. And by the way, the fact that you're pushing us into doing that shows you're in abuse of office and so you're going to be removed. And not only that, you're going to be held accountable for your crimes. We'll replace you with some people of integrity. And then we'll maneuver us to a point where we don't need government at all. Because government is simply racketeering, folks. That's all it is. Like I said, all the wars are just governments colluding with each other. Now you've got systems in place here to manage your, your food, to manage the flow of, of energy, to manage the flow of resources, to manage the, the trains, to manage all this stuff. Government sits at the top and says all you organisations have got to do things our way and you've got to give us a cut of everything you do and if you don't do it our way, we're going to put you in a cage. And by the way, you've got to make sure we get a cut of everybody else who participates. It's racketeering. That's all it is. We don't even need these people. You know, they create governments, they create the problems, they create the wars. It's this, this criminal cabal and that's all it is. And like I said, it's a multinational, multi-generational, multinational criminal cabal. We've got to deal with it. You know, we don't need these people. We don't need them at all. And we've got to face that fact and deal with it, you know. So, what can you do in all this? Get involved with your community. Start sharing information with people. And like I said, you know, get involved in the health aspects of all this with everybody. But, but stand up against your government. You know, I've got an organisation that I created called Full Circle Project which you could get involved in and create action groups as well, which would be really good. But we've got, a, we've got a beautiful world, folks, and we could do some really, really wonderful things if we just pay attention to all this and get back to who we're supposed to be. You know, get back to what we should be. You know, they, they've been trying to lead us there for a long time, but we don't do it. We get fed all sorts of stuff. And even with this, when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty, even that is a loaded term. Because what's resistance? You know, you're resisting that which is inevitable, that which is coming. Really what it should be is that. Response becomes a duty. Because it is up to us to respond. It's up to everybody to respond to this. You remember, life is wisdom's dare. And the, one of the big problems that we face is that, like everybody wants, as I said, a solution. Everybody wants someone to come along and offer them to fix. But really, what does that make you? 
What does that make everybody? If you're waiting for someone else to come along and claim your freedom for you, what are you? Why do you believe that you're not free now? Why do you believe you have to do anything these people tell you to do? Why do you believe their authority is real? You know, it's only because you've been indoctrinated into it, trained into it. I just don't go along with it. I'm mean, going to do some things. I've got a passport, I've got a driver's license because I can't be bothered dealing with brain dead idiots on the side of the road. But I don't do anything else that they want me to do. I just don't comply with any of it. And I never will. But we've got to do something, folks. And like I said, I've got this full circle project. Sign up to Full Circle Project. Find people in your area. Find an action group in your area. Everywhere I go, I meet people and they say, I've got no one to talk to. I've got no action group. I want to, I want to get involved. How can I do it? Sign up to that. Find someone in your area and get involved because there's a lot of people who do want to be involved. There's a lot of people that want to do it. And we've got to do it for these guys because that's what the future is. And if we, if we, if we don't pay attention to this, these guys are going to have no reference point. You know, the kids that are coming out of school now with this whole surveillance grid, this whole 5G grid, this iPad societies, this, this whole mentality they're into, they're going to have no reference point for what it was like to even be vaguely free. And we are vaguely free at the moment. I mean, let's face it, we are vaguely, we have modicums of freedom. But it's getting worse and worse and worse, and it's getting taken further and further away, and probably getting more and more disconnected through this iPad culture. Don't let your kids use social media and convince other people not to use social media. I mean, I've got Facebook and stuff, but I only post my shows on there once a week and I use it less and less and less and less. But you notice with Facebook and all these things, you notice you can't delete your profile. You can only deactivate it. All the data's there. It's always been there and it will always be there. You know, that's what all of this has been about. That's what the World Wide Web was for. That's what the internet was for. It was to catch people, it was fishing, it was to catch all of us. That's why 9-11 was so obvious. That's what they've done it all for, to lead to this point. And that's why they're ramping things up so much at the moment with all these theatres of conflict and all of these, these attacks and all the stuff that's happening. You see the, the chemtrail lung video that got posted, Rachel Renster, the doctor, they're talking about chemtrails. She is being attacked and the doctor is being attacked and defamed, full damage control. Oh, who's this doctor? And they're digging up as much dirt as they can on this doctor to try to discredit any other doctors from speaking out about this. You know, that total damage control, because this is someone in a white coat that's actually saying, hey, chemtrail lung exists. You know, and that's something that you can use as well to wake people up to what's going on here. And we've got to stop these chemtrails, we've got to stop this smart grid, we've got to realise that this is a war, folks. This isn't anything we can pussyfoot around with. You know, we're, we're fully, fully under attack here and it's not good. And we've got to use everything we can in our means to address that. And we can't be polite about it anymore. You've got to call these politicians out for they are. Ask Theresa May what the hell she's doing. We've got to do it for these guys. We really do. We've got to do it for these guys. So we're getting close to the end, I think. And um, this, uh, this always gets in there. This is true, folks. This is true. And... <laughs> Don't worry about um, putting your head up. Like I said, your head's already up. The fact that you're here is already up. The MI6, where's the MI6 guys? You... There'd be an MI5, MI6, come on. There's one of you here, come on. There's always, you, you gotcha? There's... No, I don't believe you. There's always one at these gigs. You could join us because, you know, you could do your job as well and you could just go and arrest Theresa May because she's a criminal. And, you know, when you come to these gigs, you, you've got to see that we're all decent people. You know, we just want a better world. So it's about time you guys stop following orders and start doing the right thing as well and realise that we're all in this together. We can't deal with this. So anything you can do to stop this, you need to stop it. And if there's a way of pulling these towers down, hey, pull them down. You know, because this is an attack against you. This is an attack against everybody. This is going to affect our health in such dramatic ways. And like I said, there's so many other levels to this, there's metaphysical levels to this, there's, there's psychic levels to this. That document that came out on the, um, the uh, psychoactive EM weapons and all that that was leaked, they're talking about transparent eyelids, they're talking about putting voices in your heads, they're talking about putting itchy sensations under your eyelids so you hack your eyes out. I mean, all sorts of stuff they can do with this technology, burning skin, active denial. And like with the nanotech that's in everybody, like I said, they can very likely target each individual for active denial. So they could have certain areas where people can go and other people can go, and some people can't go. 
And that's what all these grids are uh, around towns. These are, these are prison fences. Make no mistake about it, these are prison fences. This is active denial. Because if they're saying they can use 5G in the country, then they, obviously they don't need these towers every 400 metres. You know, so we've got to pay attention to what's going on here, folks. We're being led into slaughter, we really are. And like I said, these guys, the kids, are gonna have no reference point for any of this. So it's up to us. You know, we're the ones who've unfortunately let it happen. Unbeknownst to ourselves, we got sort of led into it. But all of this stuff that's going on at the moment is speeding up and all of this stuff's happening and all this bickering and all this fighting and all these attacks and everything they can to stop people noticing what is going on right underneath their feet. You know, the analogy I always use is, you know, we've spent our time protecting ourselves from this wild pack of dogs that is attacking our house. And we've been so intent on keeping the windows barricaded and keeping the floor barred and making sure everything's sealed that we haven't noticed these lice that are crawling in on the carpet, that are crawling up our legs. And it's been about the lice the whole time. You know, all this other stuff is just noise, to not so we don't notice the lice. About time we notice the lice, folks. Lice, Theresa May, she's a great example of lice. That was a, that was a pretty, good, uh, pretty good one to, uh, to attach. So that's my website, thecrowhouse.com. Is there any questions? Anyone got any, any questions they'd like to ask me at the end of all this? How long have we got here? We've got a few minutes left? Uh, we've got a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. What about the Talpiot program? You mentioned Israel before. The Talpiot program? Yeah. The Talpiot program, look, at I can't confirm it. Um, it makes a lot of sense. But unfortunately, the only person I can confirm it from is Brendan. Brendan, who, Brendan O'Connell, who got it from a prisoner in jail. Um, Brendan's a wild card, and I, I can't confirm it. I mean, I want, I'd like to take him at face value. But, and it makes a lot of sense, but I can't confirm it, so. I wanted to ask you, what do you know about nanotechnology? Nanotechnology um, is in everything. Um, we've done te tests, I've, I've done, I've cultured more gallons out of a, out of a Petri dish uh, from saliva. Um, I've got a microscope at home, you can find nanotech on most common fruit you pick up at the fruit, at the fruit shop if you want to put it under a 1,600, a 16,000 times microscope, you'll probably see stuff crawling on the surface. Organic food, it's in everything. It's, it's, it's in everything, it's everywhere. We're, we're facing a really, really serious issue here. But even that is, it's hard to bring that to people to even discuss stuff like that. Concentrating on the 5G and the health aspects of 5G, um, what it's gonna to do to the bees, what it's gonna to do to the plants, what it's gonna to do to the road, you're gonna reach people that wouldn't normally look at conspiratorial stuff so we've got to use everything we can to reach those normal people because this is important. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Max. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. Thank you, Tony. Notice how that common thread just rolls through, huh?